Back with more Buffy, this is episode 12 of season 7 and I'm really excited to carry on and see what's going to happen as we approach the second half of this season. Um, 10 episodes left of Buffy after this, which is madness. But I'm really, really liking this season a lot so far. The whole idea of like the first coming back and the plotline with them, I'm actually really interested in. Um, the potentials... Hmm, a few of them are a bit annoying, but we'll see what happens. I, I feel like a lot of them are going to die. So I'm not too mad about it, because uh, I just think they're going to be cannon fodder at this point, which I'm okay with. Um, we rescued Spike in the last one as well, got him back. He's been a bit of a tortured soul haha, <laughs> um, this season, and he's been rescued. And I like that scene at the end of the last episode where it was actually like the real Buffy there, um, who went to save him. And Uber Vamp is dead, so that's all very well and good. So I feel like the fight is going to truly begin now and we're going to get a lot of build up to a climactic final battle it would seem with the first uh, and yeah I'm really excited to see where we're going to go with the rest of this season how this story is going to kind of change and evolve as things go on but I'm fully on board with this season so far I'm really really liking it a lot um, and yeah I'm excited for more it's been a little while it's been like three weeks I think since Buffy, because we've had a few angels since we last went to Buffy, because um, I think we had to kind of match up. We've got quite a bit ahead in the season of Buffy than we did to Angel, so we had to kind of watch quite a few angels, but we're back at Buffy for a few episodes, so that's always exciting, and yeah, let's just get into the next one. Okay, these two are dead. Why? Oh, it's training. You have inherent abilities that others do not have. Not like you, Dar. No. Not yet. They need better attitudes, that's what they need. They regain the higher ground, make the fight known. <laughs> Spike. I have the I'm higher ground. Come at me. Full speed. He's done that plenty of times, thanks. He needs to kill to live. Oh, okay. That's hard. <laughs> so, we're supposed to, like, <laughs> I like that she's still making notes. You're all gonna die. Mm. Fingers know. crossed. My death could make you the next slayer. Oh goody. Well, not your death. Most people in this world have no idea why they're here. Or what they want to do. <laughs> I don't know if they want to do it. But I see the point. You're here because you are the chosen one. Carry on my chosen ones. Do people ever think you're weird? Um, I guess, sure. I, mean, I, I think she's badass. Oh, Jesus. Me every time when I was on screen. <laughs> the Seer's located in another potential slayer here in Sunnydale. Someone that already lives here. That's handy. Oh, God. Oh, a mace. Yeah, that's better. It's amazing. Uh, I've killed things sometimes. Not begging. You're like a small dog. Oh, no God. It's Dawn feeling left out again. I'm evil. He doesn't seem evil exactly. He's not evil. No, he's but not he evil. He's an idiot. Let's go, girls. Grab your weapons. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Can you imagine if every once in a while people just wriggled out of their skin and left it behind them, like, like on the sidewalk? Talk about embarrassing. Hey, do you think this? Not to Warren. The fresh reborn. The oh, fireplace has seen some shit. Like, ugh. I hope she doesn't cast a spell in that on Christmas Eve or something, because Santa would be in for a shock. So you messed up the spell again. At, at least it smells otherworldly. Hold up, pretty. <laughs> Oh! I think it worked. Wait, it's Dawn? Oh! Maybe it's the dawn of a new Slayer, huh? Makes sense, I guess. Remember that thing about they share the same blood or whatever? Yeah, I never got that. <laughs> she has to die. I mean, if I was ever 
the Slayer, it would mean she died. But wouldn't it be if Faith died? Wouldn't it? Or would it be that there's just always like going to be two stairs around now? Because if Buffy dies, someone gets called, and if Faith dies, plucked from an ordinary life, handed a destiny. Save Skywalker, and I smack you. Buffy now? I'm just not so sure Buffy will be happy for me. Oh, she will. Well, she. I mean, I'm not even sure I'm happy for me. Yeah, she wouldn't want that life for her. I don't think. Because you're a part of something larger, like being swallowed by something larger. I don't know if I buy it. I feel like there's a twist here. Part of a fertile heritage stretching back to Eve and I'll pay you to talk about Star Wars again. Long time. I see you bring snacks. Touch them and lose your privates. Out of being in here, I wouldn't gladly get this rid of. Buffy? Hey! Clever! You're great! So taunt! Just let me tell you this. Oh. Thanks for that, Clem. I guess I'll see you Monday morning. Yeah. Hmm. You're right. Is she actually the potential? Sure. It scratched me, and I kind of dodged it, and it kind of hit its head. What kind of thing? I don't know. Vampire thing. It was messed up. In the face, around hereabouts. Hmm. You know something about my sister? Well, I've heard people talking. A lot of them think she's some kind of high-functioning schizophrenic. But I also heard that maybe, like, maybe she could help with this kind of thing. Do you think we should go get her? Mm. She's out. She might know a thing or two. I'll take this one. Oh, boy. She wants to test herself. Whoa. Well, uh... I think I strained something. Maybe Getting through a window? That's a bad start, Dawn. Uh, She used to be a glowy orb. Mm. Oh, hello. Bandana and everything, eh? Where'd it go? I don't know. Hello there. Dawn, you could kill vampires with a sword. <laughs> Can't go upstairs. This place is seriously lacking in style. Thank you, Spike. Nearly the same. <laughs> I mean, before? Uh, crypt, actually. But nicer. Bit more. I don't know if posh is the right word, but it was. More and the like TV, comfy. so. Excuse me? When did you find it comfy? And she was on the floor. Moving on. A lot. It's a body. Joyce? It's not a body. It's leftovers. Uh oh. Did you just call me leftovers? I think we're safe. No. Hey. He's the enemy. Whoa. I do like her, like, giving lessons to people, though. I'd be interested to see what season one Buffy would do, like, if she had to teach others how she'd, like, go about it. Nope. <laughs> I mean, inelegant, but... Oh, dear. Well, enjoy. Oh, my God. Imagine if they were all just murdered. <laughs> Bloody hell! On, sweetie. Oh! Now it's her. Oh! Nicely done. A flagpole? Thanks. Buffy, up here. Nice! She's better than all the others combined. So I go to your house, only when I get there, the 
this orange cloud hits me. She was at the doorway. And I don't know if you're into the drugs, but uh... that's not my deal, right? When it all started going down, it was like we knew what we were doing. For real. Yeah, like when you dodge that first attack and then crack and cross the jaw. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. See, I wouldn't have been able to do that if you had Crack and cross the jaw. I hurt his arm. Like you realize in one instant that your whole life is different. Exactly. It's that rush you're talking about. Aww. I don't know if it's kind of that thing where you don't know if you want it, but once it's taken away from you, she may have realized she did want to be a slayer. Working with the slayer, seeing my friends get more and more powerful. A witch, a demon. Hell, I could fit Oz in my shaving kit, but come a full moon, he had a wolfy mojo not to be messed with. Powerful. All of them. And I'm the guy who fixes the windows. Those windows need fixing a lot. Don't say yourself short. And the minute you found out you weren't, you handed the crown to Amanda without a moment's pause. You gave her your power. It was like that power thing power. where Steve Harvey got the wrong winner. To live so near to the spotlight and never step in it. But I know. I see more than anybody realizes because Aww. nobody's watching me. You're not special. You're extraordinary. Xander. That was very nice. Maybe I should get a cape. Cape's good. No caps. Xander's good with those kind of speeches. Time's a crisis. He saved the world with one of those fuckers. Okay, uh, another really great episode. I like that one a lot. I, I really enjoyed the focus on the people who aren't chosen, which I think is kind of cool, um, especially when the episode was called Potential, um, because I think even if you're not like one of those potential slaves or anything, you still have the potential to do so much good and the, that potential for greatness, that potential to be a hero. I really enjoyed them focusing on that at the end and I loved that scene with Xander and Dawn at the end of the episode. Um, really lovely speech he kind of gave to Dawn. Um, and the fact that she's not special, she's, she's extraordinary. That was a really nice sentiment from him. Uh, Xander can come through with speeches like that. He he really can get to the heart of people, and I guess that makes sense because he was the heart, I think, wasn't he? Was he the heart in the spell in Rest, um, Primeval? I think he was. Because Giles was the brains. What was Willow? Willow was the spirit, he was the heart, yeah. Um, so I guess that makes a lot of sense that he can bring so much heart into um, the whole proceeding in that sense. Just a really nice speech, really well written. Um, and yeah, I think it makes a lot of sense. And I, I love that they kind of gave a shout out to the people who may not, you know, get their faces on the merchandise or may get the action figures. But, you know, you see, like, I don't know, if you're a kid and you see all the, the toys of all, like, the hero gang on the shelf, and you're like, hey, but where, where's so-and-so, you know? Where's, like, the guy behind the computer or something, you know? One of those kind of psychic kind of guys. What if they're not about? You're like, and it's, I was when I was little, like, why is there not a toy of them? You know, I want the whole gang. Um, and I think that kind of, you know, it's a rubbish, rubbish metaphor I'm going with here, but I'm going to roll with it. Um, but, you know, I think everyone deserves an action figure because everyone plays a part and you couldn't recreate this show. You couldn't recreate these stories with these characters yourself if you didn't have everyone there um, in action figure form. <laughs> I don't know what I'm talking about, but I feel like in my head it makes sense, you know? And I just love that Xander had the potential to make people who may not have like the powers or the super strength or anything, they may be the ones who are a bit left behind or overlooked at times, he, could, he still made them feel part of something and they are part of something. So I really loved that kind of sentiment and that message at the end of the episode that even if, you know, you may not be the most popular person at school, you may not have loads of friends, you may not get the most likes on social media, you, you know, 
you may not have the most subscribers on YouTube, you, you may have loads of friends in the community or whatever who do so much better than you. Um, you can still be extraordinary and you still are because you're playing a part, you're doing it. Um, so that was a really lovely message that I think the episode kind of had. But alongside that, you know, there are people, some potential slayers who do have um, a lot of potential for greatness as well and they can do extraordinary things themselves and they weren't belittling that either, they were just kind of lifting up um, the underdogs, I guess, because so much focus has been given to like, these potentials in the past few episodes. I like that there was equal treatment to some of the other ones um, in this one. So that, that was really cool and everything with Dawn that she kind of, a lot of Dawn's character I think has her being felt, you know, she felt a bit left out at times and a bit lonely and I think that turned to why she was like stealing things and everything for a bit of attention, um, to try and find that completedness and for that moment she thought she may have had that and she may have had this grand purpose in her life because especially with her being at that age you know it's kind of the age where you're like oh decide what subjects you're going to study in further education decide what job you want and decide what you do for the rest of your life and that's probably well i know from experience and everyone who's been that age you know will know how overwhelming that feels um to have to make those choices suddenly and so, so early in your life you're like okay so what do you want to do with your life Let's go and, you know, do some work experience at this place and you'll probably find more often than not that it's not going to be what you want to end up doing. Um, so then kind of focusing on that and it makes a lot of sense if Dawn's at that age where she's probably making some decisions and thinking that way, she might lean into this whole idea of her being a potential slayer and she suddenly has this destiny. Life may be kind of um, sorted for her now, even if it is a short, brutal life as they talked about. You know, she has this kind of destiny and Andrew kind of made a big deal of it. Oh, imagine having, you know, suddenly you have this old destiny and he meant like this big, awesome, badass deal. And to an extent it is, um, cause Buffy and everyone is like a big badass. Um, and I really liked Amanda who we kind of saw a bit more of in this one. Um, I, I feel like we've seen her before. I feel like she might've been in that montage of people Buffy was talking to before already. I'm not sure. Um, but I really liked her a lot and I liked the twist that, it was actually her who was the potential, not Dawn. I figured it would be when she said she escaped the vampire the first time, she like dodged out of the way and stuff. Um, and seeing her kind of step up and be single-handedly better than all the other potentials we've met so far combined um, puts her in pretty good stead, I think. So hopefully she'll be sticking around for a bit longer as well and continue to be a potential. So I liked her a lot um, and how they set up the confusion with her and Dawn because uh, she was just standing right outside the door. That was a really clever kind of twist, I liked that a lot. Um, and Willow Spell actually did work, so that's good, it just stank, so you wouldn't tell me you lose some. And yeah, I really enjoyed Dawn's journey in this episode in that respect, focusing on, you know, does she even want to have that potential in her if she is one, and then suddenly she realised that wasn't the case, it had been taken away, and you can understand feeling a bit deflated by that, even if it's like, oh darn, I'm not going to die young, that's a shame, isn't it? Uh, but still, for a moment she thought, she had this big, great purpose, but she's already a glowy orb thing who became human. That's pretty bloody impressive. Um, and she had to deal with that revelation and everything in all these lives, she, all this life she thought she'd led, all these memories were, you know, fabrications of some bloody monks. And she got through that and she found a life for herself. That's pretty bloody extraordinary as it is. But, you know, when she's that age and always questioning herself, I don't think she really thinks about that. So the fact that Xander's speech, I think, could remind her that she really is something it was a really nice sentiment. I feel like some people can relate to Dawn's journey in this episode in particular um, quite a bit, myself included, you know, kind of feeling a bit left out and like, oh, I can't really do anything. Um, so that was a really wonderful message that the episode had going for it. I like that a lot. Um, and yeah, we saw Clem again very briefly. I don't think we've seen him this season. It's been a while, because I think he said he was leaving town or something maybe last season. I can't remember. But we saw him again, and he had some extra tendrils and stuff going on, which was lovely. I'm glad we didn't really get a good look. Um, but it's just that continuity, like bringing back lesser characters at times for appearances every now and again, and just makes the world feel a bit more real because, and like lived in. So I really liked that, seeing him again briefly. Um, Andrew again. 
I think a character like Andrew works so much better when it's just one of them and not three. Like, I'm enjoying him infinitely more and I'm very, very happy about that. Uh, Xander telling him to shut up about Star Wars and offering to pay him to keep talking about Star Wars was very good. Um, and you do get the sense that he is trying and I think he's kind of one of the ones who's kind of a bit left behind and feels a bit undervalued as well. And, you know, to an extent I think it's justified because he did some pretty bad things last season. Uh, but I feel like they're continuing to... He, he's willing to prove himself and he wants to prove himself and prove his worth, I think, and he wants to get a bit more of a redemption. So that I'm going to take positively and I think that's a good start. So maybe they'll build from there with that. Um, but I, I don't mind Andrew. So that is huge progress, ladies and gents. Um, any other potentials didn't actually annoy me in this episode, mainly because I think we focused on other things, not solely them. Um, I mean, you know, they had a bit of a squabble with Xander about some nonsense or whatever, we didn't really delve into it much, but yeah, that was nice to not be like rolling my eyes at them every five seconds. Uh, and hopefully they are kind of adapting and learning some lessons and the addition of Amanda makes me view them a bit more positively because I, I liked Amanda quite a bit. Um, and the idea of Buffy and Spike helping out, like giving them lessons and tutorials, going out for like field trips and stuff, just preparing them, especially in this, like, they're making most of this period where they first kind of retreated a bit after Ubervamp died. Uh, I liked that. They kind of had a bit of a breather. And it makes sense, like, the halfway point of the season to kind of be like, okay, we've had a bit of heavy, intense plot stuff with the first. We need to like, kind of let them rebuild for this final confrontation. We can't let them seem maybe too powerful until near the end of the season. But we'll see where they go with it, you know. Uh, but I, I like them kind of, Buffy and Spike, giving them some more lessons and building them up for more and hopefully they'll be a bit more competent in future uh, and yeah the fact that I feel like it's getting a bit more and more ingrained in them the potential they have like that end scene where they were talking about you know once we got into it it's kind of like we knew what we were doing and if they get that confidence I think it will help them as long as the confidence doesn't become too much because that will get them killed but they definitely need to be a bit more grounded and I, I can kind of see that happening to them now so I'm intrigued to see who will fall, um, who may still die in future, and who's actually going to be able to cut it. Because, uh, you know, they don't have like the proper powers with the Slayer and everything yet, but it doesn't mean they can't learn how to fight and stuff, you know. There's so many people all around the world who can do all sorts of fighting styles. They're not bloody vampire slayers. So, uh, yeah, I feel like we're making some slow progress with them, which I'm happy about. Um, and yeah, Willow's spell going right was excellent. Uh, Xander giving a little mention of Oz at the end it was much appreciated for my still broken heart. Um, so that was a nice little mention. And I kind of like Dawn's response to that because we never saw her and Oz interact on screen, which I think is really funny. But obviously, if she's been implanted in all their lives, she would have known Oz and remember him and interacted with him, even though it never really happened. It's still a very bizarre thing, but somehow it works. Uh, so that was nice getting a mention of him. Um, and yeah, just how they set up the whole idea of another potential living in Sunnydale already so they could do the Dawn Twisty thing. And I didn't think it was kind of weird when they first revealed that because, um, you know, the fact that Dawn was like made from this magical energy orb thing, and it's like she wasn't really born. So, you know, is that weird that she'd be like a potential suddenly? And it did feel a bit strange, but also it would also make sense, I guess, for like the blood. But if any random girl seemingly can be chosen to be a Slayer, does Blood really have much to do with it anyway? And it was a thing, but ultimately it turned out that Dawn wasn't a potential anyway. But she's still badass, and she's still useful, and that's what this episode was all about. And I think that was a really powerful, awesome message that they kind of ran with there. So overall, another great episode. I'm really enjoying this whole story arc. I'm loving what they're doing with like the lessons being kind of... Um, taken by Buffy and Spike. Um, a few moments between them as well, definitely they're getting on better terms and stuff like that. People picking up on little moments between them of their history and stuff. Um, and they can reference their relationship and make kind of a lighthearted joke about it now, so I feel like they're definitely in a better place about it. Um, so that's all good stuff as well, because, you know, there's some very uncomfortable things regarding those two and regarding some events in season six, so it, it is nice that Things are getting smoothed over, we're moving on, we're moving forward, and we're learning 
from them. So that's all very well and good. And yeah, and Xander's speech at the end was just so brilliantly done. I love that. Um, and the whole message behind it so, so much. So yeah, you may not be a potential, you may not be a slayer, but you can still be extraordinary. And I think that's a really lovely message from a very extraordinary show that I only have 10 episodes left of. How madness. But yeah, fantastic episode. Really enjoyed it. Really liking this season so far. And we will see what's going to happen next because my next reaction will be to episode 13. So looking forward to that. And until my next reaction, thanks for watching.